as a person and as a, as a human being, I don't remember to have an opportunity even sometimes to wear the clothes I really want to wear. In Afghanistan, women's lives have been dictated by systematic oppression, discrimination and violence for a long time. But since 2001, there have been progress on many levels. However, how will women's rights be affected by the recently strengthened Taliban? Will women once again be confined to the home? How does the future look for Afghan women? We have taken a deeper look. What do you think has been the biggest cost for Afghan women the last 40 years? Uh, many losses. Many women have lost their body parts. Women have lost their family members. We have lost the social fabric of our society. Mostly we have lost our freedom, our opportunity for getting better education, higher education, better employment opportunity. So these are the losses that we are suffering. With this harsh statement, have there been any gains, especially for women, over the past two decades? Our legal framework really has improved in trying to uh, tackle discrimination and abuse. We have had very obvious gains in terms of women's legal rights. We have a lot of work to do to implement that fully, but that, that's an incredible gain. We have made a lot of gains in terms of freedom of expression and media. That's very important for a healthy society. That's very important for our future. We are a recognized nation, and it's an important gain that we have to preserve. However, if we go back to cutting hands and stoning women and um, legally discriminating against religious minorities, I'm not sure we'll have the same level of recognition and respect that we have now as a nation. Jamila Afghani has trained thousands of imams in the countryside in women's rights and human rights. According to her, Islam has been interpreted patriarchally and has been used politically in Afghanistan. This has taken away many basic rights, especially for women. For example, like when I asked uh, your daughters are going to school, is it? No. It's so shame, I mean, mom, how I, can, uh, I, how I can allow my daughters to go to school? I said, what do you think about the verses of Holy Quran, which emphasize on the seeking of knowledge? Mm. Then, like, with this type of mm. communication, we, we brought a little bit change in the mindset of imams. So this is what uh, the culture is mixed up in our life, in a way, that sometimes it's really difficult to differentiate what is culture, what is religion, and what is our national and international laws. Yeah. You need to define for every group in different terms to understand about the reality. Uh, <laughs> فرهنگ طور تغییر کرد که بستر برای فعالیت های فرنگی خانم ها مساعد شده شما می دانین که در طول تاریخ خانم ها بسیار کم چانس یافتند امروز من افتخار از ایره دارم که در موسی ما قسمت زیاد تقریبا چیز کم به نصف کارمنده موزیم ملی از طبقه اوناس هستند و در, در رهبری اداره قرار می دارند به نظر ما از همه چیز آزادی بسیار بارزش است. آزادی نه تنها برای آقایان بلکه برای خواهرای ما هم. During the negotiations, the Taliban might also want gender segregated education facilities or state enforced dress codes for women that will constrain women's lives. But are there many Afghan men opposed to this idea of gender segregation? <laughs> چی اون مسئله اقتصادی باشه، چی تجارتی باشه، چی فرهنگی باشه، چی مقدسات دینی باشه در هر عرضه شرط اسلام و قوانین حقوقی و مدنی برای زن حقوق داره و زن از این حقوق باید در کنه در بخش طبابت زن بسیار حقوق داره مردم نمیتونم نظر به مشکلات ها و موانع فرهنگی که به یک داکتر مرد مشکلات خود شکایت خود بگه The work for women's rights comes at a high cost Across the country, journalists, activists, and intellectuals are being attacked and killed. And in recent months, a series of targeted assassinations have scattered the relative safety of Kabul. Do you feel threatened? Many times, very much. I don't have that hope from morning to evening that I will survive. 
most of female activists, they have complained. There have been many attempts of such as kidnapping, killing. They are targeting specific people. Since I remember these things are usual in, in Afghanistan, especially when, you, when we are talking about women activists, they are always being targeted, they are always facing these threats and this dangerous situation. ما از خانه تا دفتر میاییم با تمامی افرادی که روبرو میشن در اجتماع تا جایی که در دفتر ما میرسیم هزاران گونه آزار و عذیت لفظی و چشمی و کلامی به ما ما متقبل میشه ما ترین رای که خانم ها میتونن به حقوق اصلاسشان تست پیدا بکنن هی است که باید مرده ها آگاهی لازم پیدا کنن از حقوق خانم ها و خانم ها هم از حقوق خودشان فرضا ما در اکثر جاها میبینیم اکثر خانم ها را میبینیم حتی بودن در خانه بدون اجازه شوهر از خانه بدر شدن این موارد فکر میکنن که اینا حقوق همین مردا سر ما حق داره که می کار انجام بدن مثلا که حق اونا نیست که کار میکنن چون خانم ها آگاهی لازم ندارن و مردا از حقوق خانم ها آگاهی ندارن دیگه زن و مرد به عنوان انسان در جامعه باشه و نه به عنوان جنسیت مطرح شوه وی هاف هرد منی اسپیچز ابات هاو ادوکیشن اف گرلز اند وومن از ا کی فاکتور ان دی دیولپمنت اف افغانستان But how has it changed these women's lives? This is what I have understood from my personal life, that education empowers. When a woman has the education, she has the strength and the power to change herself and her environment. So this is what I understand from my own life story. Otherwise, like... As a disabled woman, without education, I didn't know what would have been my life. Mm. But with education today, mm. um, I'm running very senior positions and senior management level for the past 23 years of my life. Mm. Have been engaged in different areas. With my disability, I have contributed to the life of many other women. پخوانا هغه وخت کې چې زه مکتب دوران کې وم دا غې وخت نه اوس ډیر خوښ شوی دی زما په لیدو هغه هم خپل اولادونو مکتب کې شامل کوي چې قابله مغزین راشي او دلته زده پرته سره کې بیرته غې ساحه کې دنده تر سره کې but the progress that has been made has not been evenly distributed the women in rural afghanistan have not been afforded the same rights as the women in the cities لغمان کې بیا یوازې صحیح بخش کې کولای شي نور بخشونو کې نشي کولای چې ویرمنه کار کې پخوانی کارونه شو کلی کې خو تغییر نه دی کړی که چېرته غواړي قابله شي کولای شي ولې سرنوالي ته خو اجازه نه ورکوي یو غټ مسال هم دا دی په لرې پرتو سیمو کې یا هم لغمان هم دغه ولایتونو کې چې دی هېڅ کله یو مېرمنه نارینه حتی نوم هم ورته نه وایي نوم که چېرته نقصه کې ورته وایي چې نوم دی چې شی دا هم ورته نه وایي نو د دې لپاره هم مهمه ده چې باید یو خزینه پرسونل منګ هم ولرو All the women in some places are limited to be educated within anything but health occupations. The midwifery education can become a stepping stone to other types of education. Looking at all the obstacles in the way for equal rights, how does the future look for Afghan women? So if tomorrow Taliban is going to join the government system, uh, I'm really concerned about uh, women's rights situation. Although they are saying that they will allow women to choose their husbands. <laughs> I'm, 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 to be honest, shocked. The rights which is given to us by our Allah, how a person can take that right from us. How somebody can take the right the Constitution given to us, or as an international allies or uh, member, how we can bargain our rights, which internationally has approved. So I'm concerned with this type of uh, statements from Taliban. Despite the risks, these women continue to make their voices heard, insisting on equal rights. Afghanistan is not Afghanistan of 20 or 30 years back. Today we understand our rights, not only from the Western agenda perspective, but also from Sharia perspective. And nobody can take it away from us. It will double our work uh, with this type of mindset and mentalities. But 
I assure you that we will not go back. The ongoing peace negotiations uh, are uh, a very uh, major concern right now for youth. They are concerned and worried about keeping all those achievements that they have made through past 20 years. They don't want to go back to the dark era of Taliban. There is a lot of concern about the future, not because people are afraid of Taliban, but I think it's more an issue of trust, building trust. And the, the burden is on Taliban to build this trust with the Afghan women. Um, Afghan women have gone far. They don't want to jeopardize their rights. In our history, time and again, when political agreements were made, they were made on the backs of women and women's rights. The wars were never about women, but the political settlements somehow end up, you know, marginalizing women. So I think there is lack of trust, but there is also um, a level of confidence from Afghan women that perhaps did not exist before. We have always had a women's movement in this country. Women have always fought. Uh, we shouldn't be ahistorical in that. We shouldn't think that women's progress is just the gift of the past 19 years. That's not true. But the level of mobilization and the ability to influence global narratives has gone far beyond what we had in 2002. And that's something that Taliban also need to remember. Afghan women's future is anything but certain. If the Taliban seek to further incorporate their interpretation of Islamic jurisprudence into Afghanistan's constitution and legal framework, will the justice system ensure legality and women's rights in reality? What would be the consequences for women and human rights? Afghanistan is a country of diversity and uh, the peace, peace negotiation currently which is going on with Taliban as um, a good start towards peace. But when we are talking about social justice and social peace, it needs uh, that everybody in our society can see their picture in that, that scenario after the peace deal. We want to see our picture. We want to see to have our space in that peace deal. When I'm thinking about the future, I don't think only about myself, I think about my generation. When I think about future, I see a developed Afghanistan where all people are equally and inclusively participating and uh, all systems and sectors are thriving and uh, politically we are strong enough to compete with the, with the regional countries and states. This hard work comes with a high price. <laughs> I feel tired a lot. Um, every morning I'm aware of the, the responsibility on my shoulders. It's a historic time for Afghanistan. It's, um, it's heavy. If we are not dealing with issues related to peace and war, which are difficult uh, as they are, we are dealing with a whole range of violations of um, human rights. Every day, unfortunately, we deal with cases of violence against women, people with disability, children. So it's, um, it's difficult, yes. Are you optimistic about the future? I have to be, I think. Um, I, it, it's, it's hard, but I try every day to be, because I don't have a plan B, and I don't have another option. Um, I don't want to be a refugee again, and I don't want my child to be a refugee. Um, and I don't want my old mom to have to start her life from scratch again in a different country. For all these reasons, I have to be optimistic, even if it's very difficult.